Today, I want to take a look at the Wheel of Time Season 1 as objectively as I can, based upon Nielsen viewership ratings. My personal opinion, along with so many other people that you've seen me with, Prophet of the Dragon, Amanda Manethrin, Disparu, Nerdporeal Lifeform, The White Cloaks, it is an important aspect to the story of what Amazon and Rafe Judkins did with their non-adaptation of Robert Jordan's books. However, let's take a look at the actual viewership hours from the premiere all the way through the finale episode number eight. Wheel of Time premiered, and then when it did so, it didn't release just one episode. It actually released three full episodes at the the time when we got the pickup to start working on the series the first thing we did is ak and i i was like i need the best writer i know who's ak schumann and and spent two weeks just going through that first book and breaking it down and like what are the key elements what do you as a non-book fan love what do i as a book fan feel like has to be there to keep setting up things for the future now, all combined together, that totaled up 168 minutes of streaming content. Again, dropped all at once by Amazon in their premiere. I'm going to attempt to remove my <laughs> very strong personal opinion with this show and just look at the numbers. A source that I've chosen, and it was just because it is something I've been familiar with for most of my life, Nielsen television data. Now this data is tracked just from the United States audiences only. And Nielsen has a special streaming video on demand category that includes Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, Netflix, Hulu, Peacock, and Apple TV. What did Nielsen indicate for that Wheel of Time season one premiere? Again, with three episodes. The show was actually number one on Nielsen's streaming ratings for the week ending November 21st of 2021. It's important to understand that there was nothing else that really had came out that week. Was that decision deliberate on the part of Amazon? I don't know. Tiger King had been out for, you remember Tiger King, Tiger King had been out for some months by the time that this was released. And if you look down through the list, I don't know any of these shows, really. Who was the primary audience for the premiere? Nielsen indicated that two-thirds of the premiere audience was between 35 and 64 years old, so a generally older skewing premiere audience. Obviously, that makes sense. This audience of older adults probably were book readers or familiar with the books. The Eye of the World, book number one by Robert Jordan, was, of course, published in 1990. This, however, was not the audience that Amazon and Rafe Judkins said they were making the show for. Let's look back at a quote from Rafe Judkins back in 2021. He said, quote, So we always imagined that we'd likely lose absolute hardcore book fans who'd read the series multiple times because the show would be too different from the books. Um, I know those are the crazies, but like, it's something like 70% of people who've read all 14 books think the show is as good or better than the books. A lot of hyperbole in there, Mr. Judkins. I'm going to interpret this my way. So we always imagined that we'd likely lose people who knew the books, who read the books, because the show would be too different from the books. We have to change things. We have to change things. Conversely, that the show would lose people who'd never watched a fantasy show before because it was too much like the books, which are high fantasy. All right, I'm going to try and keep editorial out of this. It's really hard. <laughs> the end result for the premiere, including the second week, was 19.38 million total watch hours i've done the math i've done the conversion you want to you want to double check my homework go ahead considering that they released three episodes at the time of the premiere i'm going to divide that total result by three that averages out to 6.46 million hours of watch time per an episode 
Anybody can take what I just did and massage data to fit a narrative. I'm not trying to come up with a narrative. I am trying to drop the most basic reasoned delineation of how the watch hours for the premiere broke out. What's that number again? 6.46 million hours per an episode for the premiere. And there were three episodes. Let's take a look at that data and what that means. If we were to go back to the week of November 21st, way back in 2021, when they premiered, instead of getting the total billions of minutes that they had, if we just looked at a per episode division split three ways, because there's three episodes dropped at the same time, the average millions of watch minutes would have been 646. Again, in reality, we can't just do that and divide by three. It's way more nuanced and complex than that. This is just one way that I'm trying to make sense of this information, this data. So we've got our baseline, 6.46 million hours. Season one still had five more episodes left, meaning that in its second week of release, it would have been dropping episode four. Episode four was called The Dragon Reborn. Now, this episode is unaffectionately known to many people as the bait and switch in the videos that I recorded back then. I even said that the bait and switch is going to happen in episode four because I saw it happening in episode three. But we're not here to talk about that. Nielsen indicated that Wheel of Time was number three for that week. What do those numbers look like? Well, Wheel of Time was beat by Disney Plus's Hawkeye. I mean, rather soundly with more than two hundred million more minutes of watch time the total episode for watch hours 11.5 million watch hours that brings us to week three very clearly week three what got its ass kicked by the release of lost in space on netflix as well as hawkeye That brings us to week four, episode six, The Flame of Tarvalin. There could be people who watch this show and they think that, you know, Leandrin's the hero and that, uh, you know, Moraine really should be thinking more about the world like Leandrin does. Episode six totaled 8.49 million watch hours. It also represented a 5% drop from the previous week. Interestingly for that week, that amount of watch hours would not have qualified for Netflix's own internal top 10 of streaming shows being played at the same time. I say that for scope and context. That brings us to week five, episode seven, The Dark Along the Ways. This was the show that had the cold open <laughs> with the very pregnant Aiel in the snow doing as Prophet of the Dragon calls him flippy kicks. Nielsen indicated that Wheel of Time was number four for that week. Episode seven watch hours fell 8% from episode six. Total watch hours, 7.78 million. Are you seeing over time, the single episode downward trend from week two, when they dropped episode four to week five, where it has lost nearly one third of its watch hours. Let's not forget the premiere peak. And I'm being generous when I do this 11.98 million watch hours. That represents a 45% drop in watch hours for this show. That brings us to <laughs> the finale. Wheel of Time, week six. Something that I love about Wheel of Time is that it never, it never weakens the male characters to make the women strong. You know, the men are strong and cool and incredible, and I love the men in the series. And and I think that the the balance between the male and female characters in, in the book, I really, I really responded to, and hopefully we're bringing it to life in the show. For the finale, Nielsen indicated that Wheel of Time was the number four streaming show. 
was beaten by Hawkeye, something called Emily in Paris, and of course, The Witcher Season 2. Episode 8 watch hours actually rose 27% from Episode 7. The total Episode 8 watch hours, 10.63 million. What do I draw from all this? Now that we've ran through this, we've heard from Rafe Judkins himself, we've looked at the data, we've tracked it over time. What do I think? Well, number one, Wheel of Time was the only Amazon show charting in a top 10 dominated by other streamers back in late 2021. Two, the post-premiere Wheel of Time was handily beaten to mid-tier viewership status in that top 10 list. Front-loading three hour-long episodes into the premiere initially boosted watch hours. However, once we started looking at the weekly single episode drops, the watch hours steadily declined with each new release until the finale. My conclusion with that, people were initially curious about the premiere and then slowly started dropping out of watching the show or not completing it. The result was a loss of one third of viewing hours just between the single episode drops, meaning week two to week five, episodes four to seven. It lost one third of its viewers. And of course, again, the show lost 45% of its viewing hours from the premiere to episode eight, the finale. Who were those people who maybe showed up for the premiere and showed up for the last episode? I believe that's who Rafe Judkins has called divisive book readers. You know, the same people Rafe Judkins ridiculed on social media and said that if you don't stop complaining about this show, that he was going to turn more characters gay. Netflix spent between 75 and $80 million for The Witcher Season 1, on par with what Amazon did for Season 1 of The Wheel of Time. Where did the money go? Because it wasn't on screen. Season 2 of Wheel of Time reportedly has a larger budget. I don't have the exact numbers. That comes to us from Forbes magazine. Will spending more money change the downward trajectory of view hours from Season 1? What do you think? Another question, will ignoring 98% of the actual plots found in the two books this one season says it's adapting, but it's not, that being The Great Hunt and The Dragon Reborn, be watched? The show is not and has never been an adaptation. I think... People who loved Robert Jordan's books are, for the most part, gone from this series. There are going to be people maybe who watch it and, you know, God bless them for it. If you enjoy it and you can somehow stomach what's on the screen and find enjoyment, you're allowed to. How is season two going to do? I honestly think it'll have a strong premiere. If they pull the same nonsense of dropping three episodes at a time to inflate what looks like interest in the show, that will tell us everything. I expect the same downward trajectory over time after that that we saw in season one. And then, of course, in the finale of season two, where everybody's going to tune in to try and see just what the hell they pulled out in some half-assed, unrecognizable version from The Great Hunt or the Dragon Reborn, the critical elements of what happens to Rand Elthor in both of those situations, if this show completely jumps the shark and turns the Dragon Reborn into a woman or into a multi-headed dragon where everyone from Emmons Field is, gets to be part of a dragon now, I don't know. That's my prediction. What do you think? Is this what you expected for viewership numbers? Is this what you expected for the views over time? What are your expectations for season two of The Wheel of Time? As ever, I am Salty Traveling C. You have a good one.